Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to draw a mouse. Now I have to admit I don't think I've drawn many mice before in the past. Um, perhaps they don't just have that cute um, factor that a lot of animals have. A lot of people don't like mice but I, I saw this picture on Pixabay and I thought it was actually rather cute the way it was just walking along sniffing the ground here. So the first thing really to notice about it is he's not completely straight on to us, he's not completely flat, his head is pointing a little bit this way so we see both feet there and, and perhaps he's got a bit of a turn there on his head so that's one thing to notice whilst we're and to keep in mind whilst we're drawing him. So really you could split him into a couple of shapes, very much a triangle there shape for his head and then his body very much an egg oval type of shape and then it goes off at the end there. So I have actually put um, some pencil guidelines in and I'm going to draw him and talk through it using the ink pen so that it shows up to you. So one thing to really notice about him is the size of his ears compared to everything else. They're huge if you look at them in relation to everything else around. Um, I'm presuming that's because they need to hear if uh, predators are coming. So we'll begin by getting in this basic shape of his head and his body. And you'll see here on my guidelines that I did with my pencil, if they are showing up, that we've really got more or less a triangle shape there. But then we need to take a little bit out of it here for his snout. His snout's sort of separate to the rest of his head, so it comes down and you've got more of a curve there. And as you're drawing, when I draw in pen, and I'm doing an animal like this. I'll do little short strokes to go with the direction of the hair because if you look at him carefully he's got a little bit of tufty hair sticking up on the end there. So we may as well get that shape in as we're drawing and then these shapes going around his ear. Rather than drawing a straight line around that triangle shape of his head use the shape of the hair. Okay, so if we look at the bottom there, it's very much a curve upwards and then down to his little tummy because obviously he's crouched down, he's sniffing along the ground looking for food or whatever, um, so he's very much crouched down. So I'll stop doing the little strokes of the hairs here because he's got a very smooth nose and afterwards, we'll, or perhaps we'll put them in now, we'll put his in his whiskers and they're going off in all directions. And again, as if we look at the ears in con size, uh, comparison to the size of the head, also the whiskers in comparison to the size of the head are very, very long. So it's all new to me, this. When, I've not, when you've not drawn an animal before and you draw them for the first time, you really notice things that um, you wouldn't have known before about an animal, even if it's something as common as this little mouse. You can't really see the shape of his nose too much underneath his whiskers but I will just indicate that there and also you can see a little bit of his mouth underneath. So pop that in as well. So we need to get the eye in. So look carefully about where it comes in line. So this is a good tip for when you're drawing the centre of the eye there. If you follow it up it comes to the edge of the ear so that's one good you know, point to look at. And again if you go across the centre of the eye comes in line with that point there. So as well as measuring things, look at where things line up. So actually we've got that a little bit low I think. We want the eye to be around here. And of course you could do this in pencil first if you weren't so sure and I'm going to Fill most of that in and just leave that little chink of light where he's catching the light there. Okay, so and if you look here, he's got much darker hairs going up his face, and I think this is probably where he's because we're seeing his face twisted a little bit, we're seeing that line of where we follow the skull and the centre of the skull here. And again, some of these hairs go around the eye socket. I'm actually drawing this quite small because it's a small animal. I didn't want to do him very big. But if you did it a lot bigger, you'd have more room to manoeuvre your pen and get more of these strokes in around these little hairs where his ears are going and everything and around the eye socket to get a bit more detail in than I can fit into this little space. 
but just look carefully at where all those hairs are going and which direction they're going around his skull. So now if you look at the ears, you're actually seeing the attachment. So the ears attached here, it goes up and around. So it's, you're not just sticking it on there. Look at how it's fastened to the body. Don't just pop it on. Look at this area here where you're seeing the outside and the inside of the ear. And it's much, much darker on the inside, but I think we'll do most of that with the paint afterwards. We'll just put a little wash of watercolour over this once we've finished him and get some of that pinky colour that's in the inside of his ear. And so this one we're seeing the back of the ear so we don't see this little shape where it's actually attached, we just see the back of the ear. So that's much more simplified. And some of those hairs are going up across. Like I say, he's got a little bit of a tufty bit on the top of his head. Now you may want to leave some of these white areas, you see where he's white or under his tummy. I'm sure that they all vary in the colour, these little mice. And so now when we go onto his body again, I'm going to do the same thing following the shape of the hairs. Now if you look here, you can see the hair going over here. So that means this, where this little foot is, if you follow it up to here, you can imagine that that's where the shoulder blade is. And if you went across and through, you can see this little foot going down. So you know that the other shoulder blade's over here somewhere. So you see the dip of the neck there, where that's probably just a lot of fur and not much else. And then this is a shoulder blade. So get all that in by putting those little strokes in the direction of that bone there. So actually do his back first and leave that shoulder blade for now and look at the direction of these hairs and just follow them over. And again look how high it comes. So if you follow the highest part of his back along it's to the tip of that ear there. So actually I've not got it quite high enough with my pencil so now I can alter that with a pen and go a little bit higher. And that gives us more of a dip here where his neck is. And don't feel you need to fill the whole thing in where these darker hairs are because we can come and pop some of that in later with the paint. So you'll see I've got a line across there, that's where the colour changes from this tan colour to a more reddy colour underneath and that comes behind his shoulder blade and then these ones down at the bottom are going this way, this is all tummy and it's quite soft and white under there. So just little short strokes in the direction of the hairs all the time and then you get that feeling of where they're going around the bones and his little skeleton, but he's got a very, very fine skeleton. A lot of this will be just hair. Um, mice can get through very, very small holes because they just make the skeleton go very into, um, you know, a very flat shape. Not much body there. Okay, so we need to put these legs in, otherwise, it's, oh, actually, we'll carry on with this little bit here first. So we've got some hairs coming down here and some across and then up and round. And that's all going around that shoulder blade and across that leg. And by getting those hairs in the right direction, you're starting to feel where his skeleton is underneath. And actually some of the ones, hairs off his face come right across there as well. And some of them come across his leg. So we'll now put that little leg in. And again, if we look at where his toe is in relation to his face. We've got a nice diagonal all across there and then this one is very straight to there. So from his face, his little toe comes to about here. I don't know really um, how many toes a mouse has. I'm just trying to copy what I can see. So don't invent things, that's another thing if you don't know. And with this foot, if we look at the edge of the ear there, we can make a nice swoop down and it curves round. So that's a nice line of movement there from his ear down to here and then it swoops out up a little bit and down as if he's gripping on a little bit actually there. And then the back one comes out higher up but it ends up like I said the same. So it ends up about here somewhere. He's got very funny little toes, like um, 
I don't know how you would describe it really. Very strange little legs. I have to admit I don't spend that much time looking at a mouse because I'm not too keen on them. They do get in the studio now and again and uh, eat paper. Tends to be this time of year when it's cold outside they'll come in and eat paper. Now you'll see we've not got the end of his tail on the photograph so sometimes you'll get a reference photograph off the internet and you'll have to sort of doctor it a little bit yourself and think about maybe where it comes to. So I'm sure the length of the tail is probably similar to the length of the body. Um, and see what looks believable to how far you want to go with that. Okay, so I think we've probably got enough there with the pen. I think everything else wants to be done with the paint itself. Seem to have a lot more tone on his face, so I'll just add a little bit more tone, darker tones with the pen there because the hairs on the top of his back are much darker. It seems to bring him all together more. And here I think feel like we've we've not got as smooth a line there as we should have. Maybe his ear's not just as round. That's better. And we've got a nice upright there, so now get that nice strong lining of the upright of that eye. And here again it's very dark. So you can refine things and just keep looking back at your reference photo and thinking about where things should be and then we'll get some paints out. And today I've decided to use these Schminky um, paints. They were to hand and I just looked at them and I thought well this is a lovely uh, good match for that colour there um, and we'll use some of the yellows as well for some of the sandy colours underneath and then a darker brown for on the top. And I'll just use the palette here rather than getting my big palette out because we're not going to need a lot of paint he's only very tiny and I've only painted him sorry drawn him quite small So I'm not going to wet this paper first this this paper is very absorbent but I, I wanted to work wet on to dry on this little ink and wash painting and just let the colours mix together on the paper as I put them on. So I've got them all ready and I'll just start with that nice red colour that we can see under his tummy and it's actually covering most of him, him apart from the where it's white so just keep an eye on where it's white and leave a little bit of white paper. Even down into his nose it's very dark there's not a lot of lighter areas there. And don't forget with your watercolours they're obviously going to dry lighter. So just be aware of where those lighter areas are where it's white and perhaps leave some paper. But I'm sure every mouse is different and you're going to have light and dark areas that are different on each one you tackle and nobody's going to have this picture afterwards to for reference to say he wasn't white there or he wasn't tan there. So just let those colours merge on the paper. Okay. So I'm going to use the brown colour and I'm going to put that around the tips of his ears. Where it's darker. And then look at where it's darker on him and let those two colours mix together. You'll notice I made two dark mixes. One is just the brown and the darker mix is the brown with the ultramarine added to make it even darker. It's quite dark down here by his nose as well. So just keep looking back at your reference photo and seeing where the darkest areas are. Now the rest of his ears are quite pink and light. Um, actually if you look at the top one here there's a little bit of a touch of blue in it but I'm going to leave that I don't want to add any extra colours and just let those colours mix together if you feel that's too heavy which I think it is you can always lift a little bit out and when that dries you're going to be able to see those pen lines through that 
Okay, and look at other areas where he may have a little bit of pink and he's got a touch of pink on his nose. And actually his little legs are sort of pink. And his tail. There's a lot of light on this front one. It looks almost white, but I'm putting a touch of pink there because I think that's the colour that it would be naturally. A pinky blue maybe. Again, you can always lift little areas out if you want to make it look as if it's got catching the light in places. Just knock it back a bit by lifting some areas out. And then we're going to put a touch of yellow here and there, that's going to warm her, him, her up. So look, look at where it's warmest, over here across the shoulder and down here. And just leave those colours to mix so it's all still wet. And where it's white, it's not completely white because it's in the shadow under his tummy. So I'm actually going to get a touch of that blue that we added before with plenty of water, just a very weak mix and add that under here because this is in shadow really so although it's white fur it's very much in shadow and at this stage you could think well do I carry on or do I leave it and actually I quite like him as he is I think we'll probably leave him there um, you could be very much more detailed and you could go into a lot more detail with your colours and add extra colours like I said there's a little touch of blue in fact I will lift that off his ear, ear there because the ears are sort of transparent in a way and the sun will be shining through and just put that little touch of blue in there to, to indicate that that's the back of his ear and in this one here I'm going to lift a little bit of that out and I'm going to get some of that pink straight from the pan nice and thick and pop that in there just, just to show that that's the inside of the ear and then we sort of differentiate between one and the other and again I could pop a little bit of extra pink there so at this stage you can lift colours straight from the pan if you want them to be emphasised anywhere. So we could lift some of this nice sienna colour again and add it where you want it to be a bit more coloured. But I think that's, that's enough actually. But we really do need to get some shadow underneath him. So I'm going to use this darkest mix that I did to put the shadow on the ground underneath his tummy. And that's going to make it look like he's got that white under his tummy there. And it'll show his little legs up more as well. So just make it a bit of a shadow. Around his little feet as well. And that's actually a bit boring. Um, I'm just thinking what colour could we add to that to make that colour a bit more interesting. I'm going to add some of that blue to it. Make it less grey and more blue. So I'll just get some of that. And even add some of the brown as well. And that's going to make it a lot more interesting. It's nice and dark but a bit more interesting. And that's showing up his little tummy. He's run down a bit there. Doesn't really matter. So with a damp brush, so if you take the excess water out of your brush, you can then, whilst it's wet, you can manipulate things where you want them a little bit more. Use a bit of dry brush. Maybe make some more ground behind him. I don't think we want too much of a background. Okay, so we'll leave him at that. Uh, I hope you found that useful. It was mostly just talking about how you would tackle a drawing. So begin with those two very basic shapes of the head and the body. Look at the size of the ears in relation to the rest of the head and the nose. So compare things all the time. Measure things against each other. So see how many times his head goes into his body. How long his legs are in comparison to the length of his eye or his ear or his nose. And that's all going to help you get those proportions right. 
Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. If you're new to this channel and you would like a request for something, if there's something that you would particularly like to learn to draw or paint, if you pop that in the comments below and I'll try and get on with that as soon as possible. And also if there's anything you want to ask about this particular demonstration, you can put that in the comments too and have a chat to each other because that's quite helpful as well to give us your tips and ideas. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all again soon with new tutorials every Monday and Thursday afternoon. Bye for now and thank you for joining me.